Sunday evening, all along that alley, people would sit out on their porches, and they would sing hymns, and they would sing spirituals. Uh, and it's still, I, I still think about it. And right across the street, there was a place that advertised cocoa, great big Coca-Cola sign. I was going to go over there and buy myself a Coke. So I put my nickel on the corner and sat down and said, I want a Coke. I had my nickel and I had to get my Coke. And this man came, white man. I can see him today. His eyes were blazing. His face got red. And he said, stand on your feet, black boy. You can't sit down here. That was my first real confrontation with segregation from black and white. A little black boy, a big white man. You can't sit down here. So I decided, and I was only about eight years old, that I was going to stand against that kind of thing the rest of my life. My first 10 years of work at Zion Baptist Church in Philadelphia was devoted to working with young people. So I decided that uh, we could not in good moral conscience remain silent while our children could not work where we buy. So I created a movement called Selective Patronage. Supermarkets, banks, insurance companies, uh, factories. And all the companies began to open up to blacks. It was the first campaign of its size uh, ever attempted in America. And so in order to fulfill my protest, I had to create programs for progress. And out of it came OIC, the Opportunity Industrial Aid Center, where I would take people from anywhere and train them for jobs. One night, after I was on the board of General Motors, I was thinking about South Africa. And I was saying, what can be done about it? Something can be done. And again, that voice said, Leon, you're on the board now. You do something about it. <laughs> you do something about it. <laughs> so I went back <laughs> and decided to do something about it. And I started what became known as the Sullivan Principles, a code that companies from America and the world began to follow to end apartheid peacefully, starting with the workplace. And I tightened the screws step by step and raised the bar step by step so the companies have to do more and more and more. Eventually, I got to the point where I'd said that companies must practice corporate civil disobedience against the laws. And then I threatened South Africa and said, in two years, Mandela must be freed, apartheid must end, and blacks must vote, or else I'll bring every American company I can out of, out of South Africa and every company in the world. Black is as black does. And let us make our blacks stand for something. And wherever you go, whatever your color, don't use it as something to hold you back. Use it as something to move your power. When I get in, in deep water, as I do very often in the world, believe it or not, I think about those songs from Washington Coast, the old folks talking about uh, how God make a way for the children and for the people. 